guys, how's it going? It's Al. Week two is here, and I have five of the top stacks that you must play in your DraftKings lineups. Look at that. It's verbal clickbait. They've already clicked out. You don't need to use clickbait. They're already here. Fine. Here are my top five stacks on the week. We're going to go through every single one of them, and I'm going to show you how to build lineups with them on the Fantasy Labs Optimizer. So let's go. He's a legend. The Smith Gang Listener League is posted. It is a $10 entry fee, three max. People can only enter it three times. So it's a small field. It's only 4,000 people, not like a 50,000 person pool, but it's got absolutely no rake and people can only enter three max. So it's a limited entry pool too. The best tournament that exists on DraftKings. It is your job as viewers to fill it. If you want to find the link to the Listener League, it exists in two places, right down below. In the pinned comment, there will be a link to the link tree, smizzle.tv slash links. The link is also down below in the description. If you click show more, whether you're on mobile or watching on PC, it is very easy to find. It will take you to the link tree, which is right here. And you can find my Twitch stream, Instagram, Smiz Gang Listener League. You can join the Discord. We have the fundraiser for No Kid Hungry right down here. We're trying to raise 50,000 from the community. Best Buys is out for this week. My article on ESPN Plus. Everything is right here in the place that you need to find everything in one spot. Very easy to find all the links. There they are, go check it out. Derek Carr is the gonna lead off here for us. He's batting lead off. 6,200 popping in basically every projection set as the top value quarterback on the week. He had 0.9 fantasy points per completion last week. So, you know, it's pretty easy to do when all you do is target Devontae Adams. He's pretty good. He had 17 targets on 37 attempts uh, from Derek Carr last week. So, like, at least we know where the ball's going when it leaves Carr's hand, which makes him very easy to stack. So, considering Derek Carr, one of the high, there's two teams. So, like, I can't say the highest or tied for the highest in terms of implied team total at 28 and a half. Taking a look at who's going to throw the ball to. One, Devontae Adams is going to throw it to him a lot. Now, I'm not saying that Devontae Adams is going to maintain a 48% target market share, right? That's not sustainable. But like 35 is Cooper Cup levels from last year. So if he just comes back to like a normal Hall of Fame level at 35% of the target market share, he's going to be all right. He's only 8,600. Again, this is a really good spot and a game that could easily shoot out as bad as the defensive backs on Las Vegas are. We can also utilize Hunter Renfro, who was seemingly underutilized in week one uh, because of all the targets that went to Devontae Adams. If Devontae Adams has a normal human amount of like 12 targets uh, instead of 17, that's more targets to go everywhere else. Hunter Renfro in play and also Darren Waller. So it's kind of a three-headed monster for this double stack that you're looking for. Obviously on Arizona, monitor the Rondale Moore injury. See what's happening there as the week goes on. You have a great value play in Dorch, who we were on as a community in week one and was 0.3% owned in the Millionaire Maker. If Rondale Moore is out, Dorch's percentage is going to go absolutely bonkers. It's going to be through the roof and you're going to have to make some percentage decisions and still go with other players on that team. Uh, Connor is fine. Brown is fine. Uh, if you wanted to not use Waller and use Ertz in this spot, he would be fine as well. Plenty of options uh, if you're going for the double stack bring back there. Go check out everything they have over at EstablishTheRun.com. Our Top Stacks video is always brought to you this year by Establish the Run and Fantasy Labs. Establish the Run, smizzle.tv slash ETR will get you 10% off of a new subscription to the site. They have great projections for football as well as plenty of paywall shows and articles on the site to help make you a better daily fantasy player and some of the best, most, manu most manicured projections in the industry. Tom Brady is next. The Buccaneers are here in a domed game at New Orleans. Now this can go one of two ways. I guess it can go a bunch of different ways, right? We're in the multiverse after all. But like Tom Brady last year, we saw the extremes when it came to his games against New Orleans. Like one game, he had less than 10 fantasy points. In the other game, he had over 30 fantasy points. If you're playing tournaments, that's just, I know that that's hard to stomach for people. Right, I know that that's really hard to stomach for people, but what if he doesn't have a good game? If he doesn't have a good game, you're just not going to win a tournament. There are no safe plays. Trust goes completely out the window. That's not something you should be thinking about when it comes to your tournament games, especially if you're playing really large field games like 
the play action, which is the $3 20 max tournament that has hundreds of thousands of people in it, or the millionaire maker where you have to score 250 points. All you care about is does this quarterback has an, have an opportunity to reach a ceiling game, 30 to 45 DraftKings points. And every week that Tom Brady takes the field, he has that. So he is going to be on this list this week. It's a tough week uh, when it comes to double stack being good values, right? So these are not going to pop for you in the projection sets that you use, but I think that that's a massive positive when it comes to tournaments because less people are likely to be on these stacks or double stacks because well the projections and we are such a projection led game at this point that the projections say that this isn't a good value so i'm not going to play that well guess what that's really great for us the less people that are on these double stacks if and when one of them hits and pretty much all the time uh there's a few quarterbacks that go off for 25 to 40 DraftKings points on a weekend when that happens we'll be holding hands with less people on a stack or a double stack. Uh, I prefer double stacks. And Tom Brady, uh, apparently his pass catchers are brought to you this week by the letter Q. Basically everybody on the team. It's like Sesame Street. Uh, Barner is brought to you by the letters I and R, but everybody else who would actually be viable for a stack or a double stack, Mike Evans, don't put him in the flex. Let me click more names. Evans, Godwin, I'm expecting him to be out, so he's not really a Q. Uh, Jones, Gage dealing with a hamstring injury. Brait ran a lot of routes. He was just out there doing cardio. Only got like three targets uh, last week, but ran a good amount of routes on dropbacks. So that's at least positive. Gage, like him, if Godwin's out and he's in, dealing with a hammy. Julio Jones ran a good amount of routes, saw downfield targets, only five of them last week, and ran the ball two times. I think that this is a spot where he may see more volume because of the history that Mike Evans has with Marshawn Lattimore in games where he is very honestly been locked down by Marshawn. Now, I'm somebody who is constantly telling you, you need to chill out a little bit on wide receiver cornerback matchups across the board. One, just because they project to be lined up against a guy doesn't mean that the team is going not going to scheme to get them off of that guy. That's A. B, wide receivers definitely have the advantage. C, most of those matchups are baked into the projections. So like if you're counting that and using projections, you're double counting the matchup. However, Mike Evans has been so drastically different against him. It's like he averages like 17, 18 fantasy points against the rest of the league, but has averaged like six fantasy points the last three years when playing New Orleans because Lattimore apparently is just his kryptonite. So you're going to have to make that decision. Do you think that Mike Evans is going to score? If yes, if you're not buying it and you're saying he's going to have this outlier week, uh, great, and the percentage is going to be low on him in tournaments and you can outweigh it. Uh, and go after that for some leverage, fine. If not, you're probably going to go with something like Julio Jones and Gage as your double stack as more of those targets go away from Evans and go towards these other guys uh, to make your stacks really pop. On the other side, we have Mike Thomas, we have Jarvis Landry, we have the kid Olave, uh, and a tight end who ran a ton of routes and played a ton of snaps at 2,500 and Juwan Jennings. I mentioned our charity down below. That link is available in the link tree. You can go to smizzle.tv slash charity or smizzle.tv slash links. Both of them will take you to Tiltify. We're trying to raise $50,000 as a community for No Kid Hungry. Kids across America uh, are dealing with food insecurity, something that no kid should have to deal with. No Kid Hungry provides school breakfasts and school lunches to help make these kids' days a little bit better and help them be better students along the way. Because if you're hungry, there's no way that you're going to be able to do your schoolwork and no way that you're going to be able to concentrate. So every dollar helps. If you have a dollar or five dollars that you can give, that would be great. Earn yourself a little bit of karma going into this weekend slate by helping us out with No Kid Hungry. And for every $10,000 that our community raises, I will match $10,000 up to fifty, dollars hopefully getting us all the way to that $100,000 goal by the end of of 2022. Russell Wilson is my next stack, 7,200 for Russ. Now, I've said this a couple times on videos. You're going to hear me say it a couple more times before the end of the week. Seattle just played their Super Bowl in week one. They were amped up. It's a game on the road in a hostile environment. This is the exact opposite. Houston could not care less about this game any more than any other NFL game that they play. They are a very bad defense. They are not uh, an accomplished defense. Their cornerbacks do not stop other wide receivers. And we have the benefit, I think, that the first year coaching staff, you know, Hackett and his crew that that were that really just had a terrible game as a coaching staff in a game planning point of view and everything, a game management point of view, a time management point of view, all of it, came out and said, I screwed up. We should have gone for it. 
we're moving forward. We're going to do the whole thing, right? We're going to do it better moving forward from here. I acknowledge that I made a mistake. I personally think that that's amazing. You never see head coaches say that, right? They always just, they circle the wagons. They're like, oh, we did what we did because that's what we did. They, I got to be tough. No, you know what? I messed up. I admit that I messed up. Now let's get better moving forward. Russ Wilson has been one of the most efficient passers ever. It's not like he was inefficient. He had a rating of 101.3. He threw for a long touchdown in the game, threw for 340 yards. It's not his fault that two different running backs fumbled on the one yard line and his coach decided to run clock instead of and kick a field goal instead of the fact that uh, they could have just gone for it on fourth and six when you paid somebody like 300 large to go and be your quarterback. Well, now he gets to go home. Teams are better at home. Russ Wilson going to be playing in front of a very positive crowd. And we know where we can stack him, right? Like, and they're not expensive because they played on Monday night. So we get that Monday night kind of bargain. Cortland Sutton at 6,100. Love him. Uh, Jerry Judy is even cheaper at 5,600. Caught a 67-yard touchdown this week. His A dot was about 9.9 .9 average depth of target. How far the ball flew when they were looking at Jerry Judy. 9.9 .9 yards uh, of A dot for him, about 17 yards of A dot for Cortland Sutton. So that narrative that we talked about in the offseason, that lazy analysis of, well, Jerry Judy is probably going to be the Tyler Lockett in this situation. Cortland Sutton's going to be utilized by Russ Wilson as the DK Metcalf. That kind of played out. You also have KJ Hamler, not somebody I'm really interested in the stack. I'm going with three guys. And I'm going to go with Albert O in this situation. Only 3,700. Six targets is a lot. Uh, a lot of targets went to the running backs and to guys like Beck. Uh, I think that that's going to consolidate this week. I don't think that we're going to see 11 targets to the running back. I don't think we're going to see Tomlinson targets. I don't think we're going to see Saubert end zone targets. I don't think Andrew Beck's going to get featured in the first quarter. They're going to get the ball to their three best and most talented playmakers early. Uh, maybe I'm assuming rational coaching. We'll find out. I think that that's where we're going with Russ Wilson and this double stack. And honestly, Brandon Cooks on the other side is one of the better value plays on the slate uh, and only 6,000. So it's very easy to have a double stack and bring it back with two of the three Denver players and Brandon Cooks. And that's pretty sexy uh, when it comes to a couple of points. Really high totals, really high uh, target expectation for Brandon Cooks and the late game giving you maximum flexibility uh, in your late swap situations, especially with as many late games as there are five of them on the slate, three of them starting at 125 Pacific time. Lamar Jackson is my next stackable player, and I know I'm going to hear this all the time. Do I have to stack Lamar Jackson? Can I just play naked Lamar Jackson in tournaments? Do I have to? No, not if you want to be smart about it, right? Like you could, but like you could pedal a bike with your hands. It just doesn't make it a good idea. If Lamar Jackson's going to have a tournament winning day for you, if you say, I'm going to play Lamar Jackson and I'm going to play him naked and not use any of his pass catchers with him. What does his box score need to look like? 200 rushing yards with three touchdowns and like 75 passing yards and no touchdowns? Is that more likely or is it more likely that he has like 250 passing yards with three touchdowns and like 90 rushing yards with one touchdown? And if he has that sort of day through the air, if this Miami-Baltimore game does shoot out, what does that look like for us? Well, it looks pretty simple because you've got a guy like uh, Rashad Bateman who caught a long touchdown this week. You have uh, a guy like Devin Duvernay Again, these aren't going to be high volume plays, but we don't care about floor. We don't care about volume when we're dealing with tournaments. And you have somebody who actually is high volume and the standard roster build this week based on the way that the salaries look. Everyone's paying down at tight end. There are so many cheap options at tight end that not only does stacking Mark Andrews with Lamar Jackson and another pass catcher give you maximum upside, it also gives you, like, I think Lamar is the highest ceiling quarterback on the slate for, on, on the three different projection sets that we're partnered with here on the stream uh, that I've looked at. He is the highest ceiling guy on all three projections. Well, if he's ceilings, Mark Andrews is going to get dragged along, and so is one of Bateman or Duvernay. They're going to do just fine for you at a little bit of a bargain. And I wonder if there's anybody on Miami who's a good player that we could use in a double stack on the other side in case this game actually shoots out. Is there anybody on Miami that could break a slate? Like anybody at all. Somebody who might, you know, like get a long touchdown and maybe two of them in one game. I don't know if they have anybody like that. I really don't know if there's anybody on Miami that has the downfield speed to break long touchdowns, uh, you know, and go along with a Lamar double. I don't know. You guys will figure it out, though. Matthew Stafford, the cover boy on this, uh, on this here video, 
they're a good stack every week. The Rams are a good stack every week. Atlanta is going to play differently than the Bills. They're not going to play a lot of zone. They're going to play more man-to-man. Their cornerbacks individually are talented, but defensively, they, they're just not that great. Uh, and they're going to be a team that loses a lot of games. And the Rams are now playing again at home and now in not a island game situation where they did not perform very well. A lot of their players didn't play uh, in preseason. They got read the riot act. This needs to be a bounce back spot for them. They know that they need to perform better. Uh, and Matthew Stafford has done really well in bounce back games himself when playing for the Rams. So I think this is a good spot for him. Uh, Cooper Cup is good. I don't need to tell you why. He's going to get a million targets. Pretty much a floor of what, eight, nine targets? Let's say eight and a half. If I told you that Cooper Cup had a, a total of over under eight and a half uh, targets this week, are you betting over or are you betting under? Go ahead, answer in the replies below. And while you're still here, drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, ring the notifications bell. Let me know that you liked the video by using those buttons. I come out with eight videos a week here on the main channel. So click that uh, heart button, click the thumbs up, make sure that you ring the bell, all the different things that you have to do that cost you absolutely nothing and help the channel out. 9,900 is a lot. That's going to hold down his percentage. So you're going to get a little differentiation there. That's A. It put him in the flex because I don't know why. Allen Robinson is somebody that people aren't going to want to click. They're going to have a lot. You know the arms crossed meme, right? The, I'm not going to play Allen Robinson. He had a terrible first week. He's overrated and he's washed up and he's old. There were reasons why he only got two targets in the first week. That's going to change. He is in the uh, Robert Woods role in this offense. After Robert Woods left, that was the Odell Beckham Jr. role in this offense. Nobody wanted to play those guys. Cooper Cup is obviously uh, the, the bright, shiny toy in this offense, but like 5,500 is extremely cheap. It's way too cheap for Allen Robinson. Uh, and I think that he has a great bounce back game in this spot. He excels at man-to-man -man and specifically press coverage. Guess how Atlanta's cornerbacks have been taught to play? Man-to-man, -man, press coverage. This is a specifically great spot for Allen Robinson. I love him this week at 5,500, especially with people running away from him after the week one performance. Jefferson is probably not going to play, which solidifies Allen Robinson and Cooper Cup. Well, Cooper Cup is already solidified, but Allen Robinson. I'm not going to utilize Skoranek. I'm not going to utilize Tutu Atwell, but... Higby is the other play in this spot at 4,200 if you wanted to go with him. 11 targets in week one, not really foreseeing that for him here. Probably five, six targets uh, maximum. Most of the targets are going to go to these three guys. Now, the bonus that you get for going with a Stafford stack or double stack in this spot is that Daryl Henderson Jr. is one of, if not the best value play at running back this week, which means that everybody's going to play Daryl Henderson Jr. as the Rams have the highest team total on the slate at 28 and a half and are 10 point favorites. And what usually happens in those situations is everybody plays the running back. He could be 30 plus percent in tournaments this week, which is a place where you kind of want to fade that guy. And the easiest way to do that is instead of playing Daryl Henderson Jr., leverage that by playing Stafford, Robinson, Higby, Cup. The narrative that gets stated is typically, well, they're just going to run the ball the whole time. They're going to be up 30. Well, if they get up 30... How'd they get there? Do you think Daryl Henderson had four touchdowns? I mean, if he did, then we're all chasing from behind anyway. We had to play Daryl Henderson to win. But in the case that maybe they scored 30 points on three touchdown passes from Matthew Stafford to these three individuals, you have a leg up on the field, one, on leverage, two, on percentage individually as players, and you can bring it back with anybody that you want in Atlanta. Uh, my two favorites would probably be Kyle Pitts at tight end. If I'm not utilizing Higby in that stack, I'm not going to go double tight end or Cordero Patterson, who will not carry the ball 22 times. They were leading this game uh, against New Orleans for the majority of the game last week. Uh, and so they ran the ball with Cordero, still got him five targets. I think that he will get targeted more this week than last. So thank you guys for watching. And let's go check out the Fantasy Labs lineup builder. We can go over here. we we'll click optimize. Let's build 150 lineups. Uh, Taking a look at the settings that I use. We went over these on the how to use the Fantasy Labs uh, optimizer. There'll be a, a card up top linking you to that video. I've got my position rules that I go over in detail there. We've got our custom rules limiting uh, to a low played defense. I might lower this as well. Uh, I need two running back or wide receivers in the lineup that are under 12%. And we're just going to apply these settings. We're going to come over here. We'll optimize. And it's going to spit out some lineups with those five quarterbacks that I had targeted in this video. So if you want to go check out the great tools that they have at Fantasy Labs, smizzle.tv slash labs, uppercase L on the labs. And there's links for that and ETR right down below. Discounted subscriptions to both in the description.
Link show more in the description if you're interested. And go checking out the great tools and projections that they have at Fantasy Labs or Establish the Run. And look out for another video right there. He's a legend.